In the northern part of the Jutland Peninsula, the beautiful and clear Gudna River flows through, running along an immense forest, spreading deep into the rear. The land rises up in the shape of a donkey and number 39's back, looking like a rampart through the forest. On the eastern edge of the forest there is a farmer and number 39's house, surrounded by a plot of fertile land, but it is very ugly. Looking through the barley growing there with difficulty, we see sand everywhere. A few years ago, the loyal people living there were still farming. They have three, a pig and two cows. They live on enough to eat, enough to eat in the sense of being frugal, living with the bare minimum. That farmer and number 39's name was Jepo Janex. In the summer, he worked hard in the fields, and in the winter, he only cut clogs. My uncle had an apprentice who, like him, knew how to carve clogs that were both sturdy and light, with beautiful shapes. They sharpened spoons and other wooden utensils, sold well, and gradually Jepo Janex became quite wealthy. My only son, Shu Ip, is seven years old. He likes to watch his father work. He imitates his father and also carves wood and occasionally cuts his hand on a rather large piece. But one day, he showed off to his parents, with a triumphant look on his face, a pair of clogs that were both beautiful and beautiful. He said he would give it to Kristen. Kristen is the daughter of a ferryman. You are pretty and elegant like a mandarin and number 39's daughter. If I were to wear beautiful clothes, no one would expect that I was born in a hut, on the wasteland nearby. That and number 39's my father and number 39's house. He is a widower. He made a living by cutting firewood in the forest and then using his family and number 39's big boat to sell it in Shinkabo district and all the way to Rangda city. No one at home kept Kristen, so he almost always took him with him on the boat or into the forest. But when he had to go to the province, he took me to Mr. Jepo Genex and Hash 39's house on the other side of the heather. Kristen is one year younger than Ip. The two children are very close friends, sharing each piece of cake each wild kumquat and playing digging holes in the sand together. They run around the area, playing and jumping. One day, they even ventured quite deep into the forest and saw a bird, which they also considered a memorable event. C.U. Ip never went to Kristen and No. 39's house or boarded the ferryman and No. 39's boat. But one day, he took me across the desert to his house to let me see the scenery and rivers. The next morning, the two children got on the boat and sat on bundles of firewood. C.U. Ip stared wide-eyed, forgetting to eat bread and wild kumquats. The driver and his companion used poles to push the boat. They followed the current and quickly passed through the lakes created by the river. These lakes sometimes look like they are completely hidden behind rows of reeds and ancient snails leaning over the water. Many times they saw old hornbeam trees lying horizontally on the river surface, surrounded by lotus flowers and ketun flowers, colored in five colors, looking like a beautiful island. The children watched endlessly. But when they approached Shinkabo Castle, where there was a large dam to catch loach, and saw the water flowing loudly through the dam gate, bubbling and foaming, Ip and Kristen liked it very much, thinking that place was so beautiful. Some. At that time, there were no towns or factories in this place. People only saw about ten or twelve farmers entering the camp. It is the sound of flowing water and the sound of ducks that makes Shinkabo bustling.
After loading the firewood, the boatman bought a basket full of loaches and a suckling pig that had just been slaughtered. He put everything in a basket behind the boat and then returned. They raised the sails and the boat was carried by the wind up the river as fast as if it were pulled by two horses. They came close to the boatman and number 39's friend and number 39's house. You two have to turn in. They tied the boat tightly to the shore, told the two children to sit still, and then left. Ip and Kristen sat quietly for a few minutes, then they went out and took the basket to see what was inside. They opened the lid of the basket and thought that to relieve sadness, they needed to take the suckling pig out to touch it and turn it over. The two children patted the pig, struggled so much that it fell into the water and the pig was swept away by the water. What a danger! In panic, Ip jumped to the ground and ran away. Kristen jumped right behind her and called Ip to follow. So the two children ran away in panic and disappeared into the forest. Soon they were among the bushes to avoid seeing the hateful river that had taken away the pig they hoped would give them a good meal. Thinking like that, they kept going. Behold, Kristen tripped over a tree root and fell down. I burst into tears, it said, have a little courage. My house is over there. But there and number 39, s no house over there. Poor. As they kept walking, their feet crunched on broken branches and dry leaves from last year. Suddenly they heard someone calling high-pitched. You guys stop and listen. At that moment, there was an obnoxious screeching sound that frightened them. They continued to run away. But suddenly they saw countless beautiful wild kumquats, too many to count. That and number 39, s all fear. They picked and ate kumquats, their green mouths and cheeks turned red. The voice of someone calling again rang out in the distance. Kristen said, we will be punished. Ip said, let and number 39, s escape to my father and number 39, s house, somewhere in this forest. They walked again, found a small road and followed it. That road did not lead to Mr. Jeppo Genex and Hash 39's house. Night came, it was dark and the children were very afraid. Everywhere was silent. From time to time, they only heard the sounds of owls and birds, not knowing what kind of birds they were. They were very tired, but they still kept going. Finally they got lost in the middle of the bushes. Kristen cried, Ip also cried. After a while, they rolled around on dry leaves and fell asleep. When the sun rose quite high, they woke up, bewildered. Through the trees, they saw a bare hill, so they ran to warm up in the sun. C.U. Ip thought he could see his house by climbing up a high hill but they got lost quite far into another side of the forest. They climbed very high up the hill and stood still in surprise. They saw below a very beautiful lake with clear blue water. Many fish swim on the water surface to bask in the sun. Next to them is a peanut tree heavy with fruit. The peanut kernels are still young and soft. Suddenly they stopped paralyzed with fear. Standing near them, as if she had just crawled out of the ground, was a tall old woman, with a dark brown face, shiny hair, and the whites of her eyes as bright as those of a black person. She carried a bag on her back and held a stick with many points in her hand. It was a bohemian woman. She told them something, but they had an and hash 39. T recovered. Yet so at first they didn't and hash 39. T understand anything. 
She held three large peanuts, showed them to them and said that they were magic peanuts. Inside were the most beautiful things in the world. Finally, Ip dared to look straight at her face. She spoke in such a gentle voice that I became bold again and asked for those peanuts. She gave it to me and then picked other fruits from the tree. Ip and Kristen stared at the three peanuts. Ip asks, is there a two-horse carriage in this fruit? The Bohemian woman replied, in here there is a cart covered with gold and two people pulling it with gold. Kristen said, then let me go. See you Ip gave it to her and the woman tied a peanut to one end of Kristen and number 39, S scarf. Ip acts again, and in this fruit, is there a beautiful scarf like the one Kristen wraps around his neck? There are ten more beautiful ones and countless beautiful clothes, embroidered shoes, a hat with a lace veil. Kristen shouted, then you have to give it to me. See you Ip is always generous. As for the third fruit that looked black, Kristen said, you have to keep this one. It looks pretty nice too. Ip axed the bohemian woman, but what in number 39? S inside, ma and number 39, am? She replied, there is one that is better than all of the three fruits. The boy clutched his peanut like a precious treasure. The woman promised to lead the children to the right path home. The children followed, but this path was completely opposite to the way back. However, we should not suspect that the bohemian woman intended to lure the two children away. Maybe she herself was wrong. Halfway there, the two of them met the forest guard. He recognized little Ip and took them to Mr. Jeppo Genex and Hash 39's house. At home everyone is worried about them. However, the whole family also forgave the children, after explaining that they deserved a heavy punishment. First of all for dropping the suckling pig into the river, but the most deserving punishment was for then running away into the forest. People took Crixton back home, while Ip stayed in the small house by the forest. At night, when I was alone, the first thing I did was pull out a peanut from my pocket. Inside was something more precious than a gold-plated carriage. I placed it carefully in the slightly open door, right next to the hinge, and pulled the door in. The peanut shell broke open. The inside had been eaten by worms and was no longer there, leaving only a powder like crushed tobacco or black soil. See you Ip thought to himself, and quat, I knew right away. Such a small peanut has no room to hold so many beautiful things, the most beautiful things. Crixton is probably no better than Min, he can and number 39, T have nice clothes and a two-horse carriage. There are two golden horses pulling it. And quat, winter passed. Spring came and many years passed. Ip is about to go to his first Eucharist and confirmation ceremony. During the winter I was sent to the pastor and number 39's house in the nearest village to pray. At the same time, he drove a boat to visit Ip and number 39's house and reported that Kristen was staying with someone else. It was a lucky chance. Kristen was going to work for the best people in the world, the rice shop owner in Heckming, many miles away from this forest, very far to the east. When you get there, you will have to help people with cooking, cleaning, and serving and selling. I will have my first Eucharist there. The owner and number 39's plan is that at that time, if she proves to be hard working, obedient, and has nothing to worry about. She will keep her as an adopted child. They will go find Ip so she can say goodbye to Kristen, because they still call them tiny unmarried couple. 
When they were about to leave, Kristen gave Ip two peanuts that Ip had given him in the forest. She added that she had also carefully stored in the box the beautiful clogs that Ip had made for her when she was a child. After that, they parted ways. So Ip was accepted as a believer. When my father died, I returned to live with my mother and became a skillful clog maker. In the summer, I work in the fields, helping my mother have to hire someone to plow. Only occasionally do people get news of Crixton from a postman or a freight carrier. I live in the house of a very pleasant rice shop owner. When she had her first confirmation, she wrote a long letter to her father, in which she sent her regards to Ip and Ip and number 39's mother. She told me that her mistress gave her six new bras and a beautiful ow dye that had only been used once. That was very good news. The following spring, someone knocked on Ip and number 39's mother and number 39's door. It was not a stranger, it was the boat driver and Kristen who had the opportunity to go for a ride one day. She looks as beautiful as a young lady from the province. She wore a shirt that fit very well and was beautiful, because it was made for her, not the boss and number 39's old shirt. So Crixton came home, her clothes were very luxurious. As for Ip, he was still wearing his usual clothes. He could n and hash 39t say a word. He took the young woman and number 39's hand and held it in his own. He felt very happy, but he was speechless. Crixton, on the other hand, kept chattering and telling stories and hugging and kissing Ip without any embarrassment. When there were only two people left, she asked Ip, didn't and hash 39, t you recognize me right away? He remained as quiet as a prick. Actually, at that moment, he seemed frozen in surprise, so he kept holding Kristen and number 39's hand. Finally, he was able to say, that and number 39's because you have become a luxurious lady, and I am messy like a poor farmer. And they walked hand in hand on the land behind the house. They looked at the surrounding landscape, the river, the woods and the heather-covered hills. Ip thinks that of course Kristen will be his wife. People always call them the tiny unmarried couple. That seemed like a fait accompli to him. The two of them made a promise to each other, although no one had expressed it to the other. That same evening, Kristen had to return to the village where the car crashed to go to the province early in the morning the next day. Her father and Ip take her away. That night the sky was beautiful, the moon and stars were bright. When he arrived and when Ip held Kristen and number 39's hand again, he felt like he didn't and hash 39t know how to leave her. He could n and hash 39t take his eyes off of her gentle face. He tried to say the words from the bottom of his heart, Christina, if you weren't and hash 39, t used to living so luxuriously, if you could come to my mother and number 39, s house and be my wife, then one day we would get married. But we can still wait for each other. She held his hand and said, that and number 39, s right, we shouldn't and hash 39, T be too hasty. I believe in you and also believe that I love you, but I want to think more carefully. He gently kissed her, then they broke up. On the way back, he talked to the boatman that he and Kristen were engaged and this time it was a serious matter, not a joke. The father replied that he wanted nothing more. He went with Ip to his mother and number 39, S. House, stayed very late and that night they only talked about getting married in the future.
Over the past year, Ip and Kristen wrote two letters to each other. And quat, loyal to each other until death and quat, is the inscription at the bottom. One day, he sailed to meet Ip and conveyed Crixton and Hash 39's greetings. Then he began to tell many stories, but he was confused and not very clear. Finally, Ip understood like this. And quat. Crixton has become more beautiful than before. Everyone loves and cherishes her. The son of a rice shop owner has a good position in a large trading company in the capital company Pu Nhag went back to Herming to visit. He found her lovely and made her love him. His parents were also happy and hoped that the two would like each other. But Kristen did not forget that Ip loves her very much, so she is willing to refuse. And Quat. Having said that, the boat driver fell silent, more confused than before. Ip heard all the stories, said nothing, but his face turned pale. Finally, he shook his head and stammered, No, Kristen must not throw away her happiness. The boatman said, Then I will write her a few words. He sat down, took out paper and pen. After thinking carefully, he wrote a few words and then immediately deleted them. He wrote again, then deleted again. He tore it up, wrote another one, then erased it again. It wasn't an hash 39. T until the next morning that he smoothly wrote the following letter and gave it to the boatman and gave it to Kristen. And quat. I have read the letter you wrote to your father. Through this I know that up to now, for everything has been arranged to your satisfaction and you could be even happier. Christina, please ask your heart again and think carefully about the fate that awaits you, if you marry me. I have no wealth. Don and number 39. T think about me, Don and number 39. T think about what I will be like, think about your eternal happiness. No promise binds you to me and if in your heart you once made a secret promise with me, I release that oath for you. Kristen, I hope that you will have a lot of happiness. God will comfort you. My always loyal friend, Ip. And Quat. Crixton sees that you are a good person. In January, the marriage news was announced and then she went to Cologne with her future mother-in-law. The wedding will be held in the capital because the groom is busy with work and cannot go far. Along the way, her father kept up. She asked how Ip was doing. The boatman did not meet him, but his mother told him that he was very taciturn, always thinking alone. While thinking, Ip remembered the three peanuts that the bohemian woman gave him. Inside the two fruits were golden carriages and beautiful clothes, which he gave to Kristen, and indeed she was about to enjoy those good things. For him, the prediction had also come true. He had enjoyed a little bit of black soil. The bohemian woman said, And quat, that is more than anything. And quat, Ip thought to himself, And quat, how did she guess so right? The blackest soil, the darkest grave, are those the most suitable things for me. And quat, in the past few years, not much, but for Ip it was a whole lot. Century. The restaurant owner, then his wife, died. They left their only son thousands of gold coins. At that time, Kristen had a beautiful carriage and countless splendid clothes. Two more years passed. The boatman had almost no news of his daughter. Finally, he received a long letter from her. Things have changed a lot. Neither she nor her husband knew how to manage their enormous assets. People think that God has not blessed them. They began to fall into poverty. The heather bloomed again and then began to wither again.
Snow fell on the forest, protecting it and number 39's house from stormy winds. Then spring brings sunshine. It was plowing the field, when suddenly the plow blade hit a very hard object. He dug into the soil and pulled out something that looked like a big, black ring, sparkling in the sunlight. It was a solid gold bracelet that came out of a giant and number 39's throne. Digging further, he also found many other objects used as jewelry of an ancient hero. He showed everything to the pastor, and he wrote a few words introducing him to the judge. The judge told him, The things you dug up are the most precious and rarest things. Ip bitterly thought to himself, He probably thought that these were the most precious things of all for people like me. Well, since these things were considered the most precious of all, the Bohemian woman and number 39, S prediction was correct. Following the judge and number 39, S advice, Ip brought those precious things to the County Credit Museum. Pu Nhag and received a large sum of 600 gold coins. After that, he went for a walk in the city, planning to take the train that brought him there the next morning to go home. In the evening he got lost in the winding neighborhood and reached the suburbs. He entered a poor alley and saw no one. However, there was also a little girl who came out of one of the shabbiest houses. He asked the baby for directions. I looked at him in fear and burst into tears. Feeling compassion, he asked why she was crying. You whispered words that I didn't and hash 39, t understand at all. Ip walked with the baby a few steps under a lamp shining right on the baby and number 39, s face. He was startled and startled. In front of him was Kristen, like when he was a child. He cannot forget because those lines are deeply engraved in his memory. He told the baby to take him home and the baby saw that he seemed so good so he stopped crying and took him back to the poor house. They climbed up an attic ladder high up under the roof. The air here is dirty and heavy. There was the sound of someone wheezing and moaning in a corner of the house. Ip struck a match and in the dim light, he saw a woman lying in a shabby hammock. That and number 39, s the baby and number 39, s mother. He said, what do you need? I and number 39, ll help you. Brought me here, but I came from somewhere else and am not familiar with this city. Do you know anyone nearby or anyone I can call to help you? At the same time, the sick person and number 39, s head fell off the pillow. He lifted her head and placed it back properly. Then he looked at the poor woman and number 39's face. That was Kristen, the ancient queen of the heather. It and number 39's been a long time since it saw anyone mention her name. People avoided mentioning her name in front of him, so as not to remind him of painful memories. Furthermore, people only received sad news about Kristen. Her husband lost his mind after enjoying the large inheritance left by his parents. I thought that fortune would never end. He resigned from his job and traveled abroad, spending like a king. Returning to Cologne, he continued to waste money. When he ran out of money, he got into debt and became increasingly bankrupt. His friends, the people who had dedicated themselves to helping him spend all his money, now avoided him, saying that he deserved to be so miserable. One morning, people found his body in the river. Kristen has long since died in his heart. The little child, born in a time of hardship, has passed away. She only had one daughter left that Ip had just met.
The mother and child lived alone, hungry and cold in this shabby corner. Illness has come to torment poor Kristen. Ip heard her mutter, and quat, so I and number 39, am about to die, leaving this poor child behind, with no money and no one to raise him. I wonder what will happen to him, and quat, exhausted, she fainted. Ip found a piece of candle, lit it, and the room became a little brighter. He looked at his little daughter and saw more and more clearly the look on Kristen and number 39's face at that age and suddenly he felt that because he loved his mother, he would caress and pamper the child he had just met for the first time. The dying young woman saw him. She opened her eyes wide. I wonder if she recognizes him? He never knew that. A moment later, she stopped breathing unable to utter a single word. Now we return to the forest near the Gaidna River. The heather has fallen. The autumn wind blew strongly, rustling dry leaves across the desert until the boatman and number 39's hut, now occupied by someone else. But, hiding next to a mound, under the shadow of large trees, Mr. Jeppo Jang's and Hash 39's house, on the contrary, has whitewashed walls. There was a big fire burning in the house. When you laugh happily and move your red lips, people think a bird is singing. Life and joy reign with you in the house. Right now I am sleeping in Ip and number 39's lap, whom I consider both my father and my mother. My mother was laid to rest in the cemetery of Kapunig City. The baby only slightly misses his mother. Ip has become quite wealthy. His business is thriving. He has multiplied the amount of gold he pulled from the ground, and he has found his old girl Kristen again. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.